Well, hey there. Let's try and make a grating object. I know that a grating object will want to the surface, so what I did is I put six little random points in here at some random elevations, just to give me a bit of a surface. Also gives me an EG over here in my surfaces, so I have a target. And as you can see, it's just made of six little points. That's all that's in this drawing. One polyline, six points, making a surface. What we want to do now is make a grating object out of this. To do that, this thing will want to be a feature line. To make this 2D polyline into a feature line, I just like to go up here to a feature line, create a feature line from an object, pick my little object that I have, that's all, hit enter. It's going to put it onto site 1 for us. I like to give these things names. So in this case here, I'm going to say, oops, pond bottom. And I like to include it as a style as well. Let it make a basic feature line for me. It's going to put it on C topo and it's going to erase this entity. We're going to assign elevations after this because I want to show you the editor as well. We'll say OK. Now I've got a feature line. As soon as I highlight my feature line, you see my ribbon turns green. If my resolution was set to the point where you could see it, you'd see that it should say feature line pond bottom. But all oh, my green ribbon up here has a bunch of tools I can edit my feature line with. All I really care about right now is the elevation editor. Clicking on that will bring up this. This is your standard panorama box. Inside the panorama is a grading elevation editor. You can see, yeah, let's see if I click back here, hit escape. Hitting escape is deselects an object. You can see that my line turns off. It's no longer green up here, but my elevation editor stays open. And now when I pick on the different stations, you can see that different chunks of this here guy lights up. Pretty classy. With that, now I can pick the top one and the bottom one. I'm going to set an actual elevation in this case here. I'm just going to pick it to close. Elevation, 50. That's good enough. Now all these points are sitting at 50. I can close this. Now, to make a grading object out of this, I want to grade to an elevation. I want to grade to a distance, then grade down to the surface. That's the basics of what I'm looking for. So if I go here to my grading creation tools, I can see that, sure enough, I don't currently have a group listed, but it does put in my one default surface. I could change the surface by clicking this, but let's change the group real quick. The grading group I'm going to put it into is a grading group called Pond just to give it a name. We're going to come back and look at automatic surface creation when we look at the site, so we'll just ignore that for now and say OK. Now I've got a group and I've got a surface. Now here's the tools I can use. These four different choices. I'm really just going to use distance, elevation, and surface right now. Relative elevation is if I'm coming off the top and I want to go a specific distance. We can talk about that in a different video. Right now let's grade to an elevation. So the elevation I want to grade to is something higher than my 50. To create the grading, I just got the little tool right here. I'm going to click on this guy, click to the outside. I'm going to apply it to the entire length. And the elevation I want to go to is 55 feet. So 5 feet higher than what it's currently at. I'm going to do that at a grade. And right now the default grade is 50%, which let's make it something more like 3 to 1. To one, and that'll be for cuts, and then we'll do the same for fills. Let's do slope as well. And we'll do three to one for fills. All right, there we go. As you can see, it's all red, so it looks like it's an entire fill at the moment, which is fine. Hit escape just because, well, let's clean it up so my command line goes back. Let's grade it out to a certain distance. So I got a little berm on top of this. Let's grade that guy out. So we'll say create grading. Click on our exterior feature line. Apply to the entire length. Specify distance in this case here. Let's go out, say 10 feet. And we're going to use a grade of 0%. There we go. Now we got a flat 10 foot berm on top of this. And let's build something that goes from the outside of our berm back down to our surface. So we'll just grade to a surface. We'll 
here and say create grading. Pick this guy, apply to the entire length. We're going to do a grade, and this time we're going to do something a little more gradual, like say four to one. And we'll do that for the, the fills as well. Oops, we have a slope. And we'll do four to one. All right, there we go. Now we have a four to one slope coming off of our 10 foot wide little berm off of our five foot deep little pond. We can turn this into a 3D view and kind of look at it that way. Kind of see that that's what's going on. The only thing we're missing is technically the bottom doesn't have a bottom in it yet. It, it, it's a hole <laughs> to fill in that hole. We want to go here and say create an infill, but that doesn't work so good in that view. Let's go back to a plan. To fill the bottom of this in, we're just going to create an infill. Say create infill, and you'll notice infills only let us go where infills can go. So I'll click there, that's it. Now we have all those pieces. All right, there we go. Now we've got a grading object. Let's see if we can turn that into a surface. So we'll go over here to our sites, open up sites. We see that site one is right there. Inside site one, we have a grading group. That's this grading group in this case. Pond, if we right click on pond and check out its properties. We can see that there's a name. There's automatic surface creation that we avoided the first time. If we click that now, it's going to bring up create a surface. We'll just make it like normal. It'll be a tin surface. It'll call itself pond. Give it one of five design contours. We'll say OK. We'll say OK again. Boom. There we go. We got some nice little contours. Now if we want to see what that looks like, see how it's working out. Let's get a profile of it relatively quick. I like to just draw a plain Jane polyline. Drag that across here. Click on that polyline, right click. Let's check out the quick profile of it. I'm just gonna do major grids. Now I got my EG, I got my pond. Let's say okay, put that over here. Uh, yeah, it's just telling me that I made a quick profile. Ta-da, there it is. I can't see my bottom line because it's right at my 50. If I click here and I take the display order of my view, sent to the back, now I can see. There's my ground surface, there's my new pond. Ta-da, not too bad. One more thing we can do, just so we can see that the happening all at the same time. I'm gonna click in here, grab my feature line, go back to my elevation editor, Let's see if I can do this with this limited space I got. If I change my elevation of my line at the bottom there, say I bring it down to 45, a few things will happen. One, I now have my line at 45. This maintains its elevation of 55 because that we set that elevation and everything adjusts around it. We can see it in profile here as well as we can see that we have now more uh, a bigger slope because now it's much higher than that. That's the basics of a grading object. Also, now that my grading object is here, say I want to change some of these aspects because now I realize my 55 is too high, let's say. The easiest way to do that, uh, let's close some of this down. Don't need that anymore. Don't need this. Let's check this guy out. Anywhere you see a diamond, that shows you that there's a grading object. So in this case here, this is my grading that goes from the base up. That's a little red diamond. There's a diamond over here for the flat piece that comes out here. And then there's a grade to the surface, as well as the diamond for my insert, or the uh, infill, there we go. There's also a diamond here for my infill. If I wanna change one of those, I just have to find its diamond. Click on it, right click and say grading editor. In the grading editor, it brings back all the pieces that I currently got going on. Here's my cut and fill, the slopes and formats that I use. Interesting, I'll change this from the grade. But if I change it to slope, we can see that they both say three to one, or they'd both be 33% if I change them both to grade. But say I go in here and I take this guy, now that I've lowered it to 45, let's keep up with the five foot lower. Bring that down to 50. Now you can see this changes. 
And if we look here at our profile, there we go. Now we've got that guy sitting at 50. Looks not too bad. All right, easy enough. And if we wanted to change any of those things, we can do it. Fun thing, notice at the diamond, if you do a regen at some level, the diamonds are definitely screen based. So if you if you ever lose them, like you've zoomed in like this, and you've done a regen and lost them, because you've, now you've zoomed back out like this, and you don't know where those points are, you can always zoom out, do a regen, they all get gigantic, then it's much easier to pick. Also, when you notice, when you hover over the diamond, it also highlights the little the little groin lines or the catch lines here too. Those are all grading pieces as well. All right.